Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Ba'ashem Rechach Kodash. Double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, who all know the truth of the gospel of Yahushai from. And peace, love, salutation, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation, to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites. And Yahweh is the name of his only begotten son. The Savior and Redeemer of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, so I got you know, two articles here. This first one is uh, Bumbling Biden's attempt to battle domestic terror. Domestic terror seems doomed to end up targeting the wrong people, and um, you know ultimately this is leading up and uh, leading up to the you know persecu persecution of uh, you know the uh, the Israelites. All right, um, which is also going to involve the uh, prophecy of the famine of the word you know being fulfilled um you know they, they're trying to push out this uh notion that they're that they're attacking what they consider uh so-called white supremacy but the uh verbiage that they use is so vague purposely because they're they're going to you know really direct this at the uh, truth you know being being spoken about because this truth is really the the number one um you know the the number one uh uh what you would say the number one threat to Esau's kingdom okay um as the scriptures talks about that uh then shall that wicked be revealed actually let me uh, pull that out real quick in the book of um second Thessalonians the second chapter um second Thessalonians chapter two verse um eight it says and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Okay. And what is the spirit of the Lord's mouth is who the Israelites. All right. And, and how is the wicked being revealed by the Israelites? Uh, Salaki is the prophets and so not, not, not the Israelites It's the prophets who are Israelites, I should say. All right. And the wicked being Esau, Edom is being revealed by way of the, of the prophets, you know, prophesying and bringing out the truth of you know the matter of who he is and who we are okay and so on and so forth so it says whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and when you go into that word consume let's see what it has for the greek it says uh to consume to use up to destroy all right uh, and we're destroying this devil with with the words all right the 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 battle of the words the, you know war of war of information esau is losing that war all right, which is now he's going to because he's losing that war. All right, the the, the main information uh, is who the, the heavenly father's true name, Yahweh, his son, Yahweh Shai. Those are the names that Israel must call on to be saved. All right, uh, uh repent and, and you know, in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, uh, keep his law, statute, commandments to the best of your ability. All right, uh, you know, uh, uh love your neighbor as thyself. I'm talking about Israel. All right, and then also hate the hate the uh the evil. Okay, and you know, Esau Edom, his world is built on evil. And we are revealing who that wicked is. So it says, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And that's you know what Yahweh Shai is going to uh you know basically finish. He's gonna finish the job by destroying Esau and his kingdom and his uh you know his uh angels, aka his messengers. You know, the ones who worship the beast and perpetuate the system. That's what Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to do when they return. Is going to is going to uh, destroy it with the brightness of his coming. But um, let me play this first clip. I'm gonna read this article, but I'm gonna play this clip first coming from Russia today as well. It says domestic war and terror, US says white supremacy is top threat. Once again, they're just using this as a cloak, you know, to hide their real agenda. Because when you go into you know ancient history, this isn't the first time Esau, uh, uh, in, in Esau's system, all right, under the old old uh, system, which was the Roman Empire, wasn't the first time that they waged war on their uh, own citizens, all right? Specifically, it was uh, during the time of Nero, all right, where it says right here, the, the title, eyewitness2history.com, says Nero persecutes the Christians 64 AD, which was something that Yahweh Shai prophesied in a book of, uh, I believe it's uh, Luke 21, uh, Matthew's the 24th chapter. It spoke about, you know, um, the destruction 
of uh of uh Judea, all right, in, in the in the um in what in in what uh Nero did, all right, or or you would say um Vespasian or right, Titus did during 70 AD, but it really started around 64 AD. Okay, but let's just play this uh, clip and I'm gonna read that article. Extremist threat. You ask with the Biden-Putin summit as headline news, back home there have been some pretty big developments. The U.S. government has launched a war on terror at home. The first ever national strategy for fighting domestic terrorism has been rolled out, and white supremacy is listed as the number one threat. The two most lethal elements of the domestic violence extremist threat are racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists and militia violent extremists. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Biden is all in on this one, and he says it will help reunify the country. This is a project that should unite all Americans. Together we must affirm that domestic terrorism has no place in our society. We must work to root out the hatreds that can too often drive violence. In the name of unity, Biden is urging Americans to report on their friends and family so that they can be de-radicalized. And Americans are already doing that. Over 100,000 pieces of digital media have already been provided to the FBI by the U.S. public in order to help them investigate the January 6th Capitol riots. Those who are family members or friends or co-workers know that there are pathways and avenues to raise concerns and seek help for those they have perceived to be radicalizing and potentially radicalizing towards violence. Biden says that he plans to work with social media companies to help fight disinformation and to educate the public. We are working with the social media companies to be able to better identify the false narratives, to be able to identify disinformation and misinformation, and really educate the American public. So there you go. You know, just to uh, add on to this very quick, it says they're working with the social media companies, all right? And how is this gospel being spread? You know, mainly it's being spread on social media, all right, which is, you know, YouTube, which I'm using right now. Okay, uh, you know, brothers, you know, use uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook, you know, uh, StreamYard, Streamlabs. All these are social social media, you know, platforms. But you just had the Homeland Security um, Secretary said that they, that the government is working with this, these social media companies, you know, to uh, better identify false narratives, which they considered false narratives because in this world, Right is wrong and wrong is right. Okay, up is down and down is up, which the scripture tells you uh, that in Isaiah the 29th chapter. Let's get that. Isaiah 29, verse um, 15, it says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And who is that? That's Esau. You see, the, the men of the Lord, okay, uh, uh, starting with the prophets, we, we openly speak out you know what we're you know what we believe okay and 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 our conduct and our communication you know we're not trying to hide these things you know from anybody that's why we go out on the highways and byways which was something that the howard shy uh uh you know um commanded us to do all right and even howard shy himself he he spoke about how he spoke openly daily you know in the synagogues let me see i'll uh, pull that up as well because we're following in, in the footsteps of um, of our Lord Yahweh Shai, all right. I uh, believe this. Let's see. Openly, this bunch is going to pop up, but uh, here we go. Saint John eighteen. I always think it's Matthew eighteen. Saint John eighteen verse twenty says, and Yahweh Shai answered him. Um. Actually, let me start at nineteen. It says, then the uh, the high priest then asked Yahweh Shai of his disciples and of his doctrine, right? And that's what we're speaking, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai's doctrine. And we, you know, consistently get questioned for it. We get berated. We get, uh, uh, you know, gainsayed. We get scoffed at, mocked at because of the doctrine, okay? But that's why the Lord said that we have to, you know, uh, well, Ezra said what? That, um. He started to commend them greatly who stood so stiffly for the name uh, uh, of the Lord. All right. 
because the, the name of the Lord encompasses also his doctrine. So it says, Yahweh answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Okay? So we haven't said anything in secret. So when you go back here to the book of um, Isaiah, let's lock it. Uh, the book of Isaiah 29, verse 15, it says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel. That's why they have all these, you know, secret meetings, the, the Bilderberg meetings, the, you know, the, the meetings on Davos, the, the um, what is it called? You know, your World Econ Economic Forum meetings, uh, uh, all these, these elites, they have, they see, even with the whole UFO um, release that they're supposed to have, you know, that the, that the uh, Congress is supposed to release later this month, end of this month, they're saying that they're not even releasing, you know, they're not even going to be saying everything that they know. OK, but the Lord said it, you know, in due time that what everything that's done in darkness shall be brought to light regardless. So it says, um, and their works are in the dark and they say who seeth us and who knoweth us. Yeah, because this is a part of that. Them trying to make it seem as though they're trying to attack white supremacists, you know, um, using that as the uh, the face of domestic terror when really they really want to come at the, the this truth, which they also can come at white supremacists, uh, supremacy as well as them being basically a um, the fall guys <laughs> for Esau Edom, because what Esau really wants to do his real agenda is to have that one world religion, one world government, one world uh, order. All right, the, the the NWO. All right, he doesn't want nationalism. He doesn't want you know people to you know feel separate. He wants to unite everybody under one um system okay which same thing you know i always bring out um antiochus or antioch antiochus or, or epiphanies uh tried to do you know esau is, is uh you know coming in that same <laughs> it's that same uh, uh spirit that esau's always had he wants to have everybody underneath everybody of uh, the populace of the world underneath that one system so when you read here in the book of 1 Maccabees 1, verse uh, 41, it says, Moreover, King Antiochus, uh, Antioch wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Okay? So let's uh, continue here. So, oh, so like you saw, what I want to say here, uh, let me get this back here in Isaiah 29 verse 16 surely the turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay all right so they turn things upside down and then they say that that well the things that are on the bottom should really be on the top and the thing, things that are on top should really be on the bottom you know the things that are false you know false narratives are really the true narratives and the things that are true are really the false that's why the scripture talks about the the science falsely uh so falsely called okay you know Esau and, and, and his technology and his uh you know medicine and everything that he does his whole system is backwards is all false but he is a master of deception he is the deceiver so he promo he promotes his deception as being true and he promotes what is true as being false and he's going to use and he's going to try to take the truth off of you know the social media platforms which goes into like I said before the uh, prophecy of the uh, famine of the word being fulfilled, Amos chapter 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor nor of a thirst for water, but of hearing of but but of hearing the words of the Lord. Alright, and how are the words of the Lord heard? It's by way of the prophets speaking, and the prophets are using, you know, uh, uh this platform, social media, the internet, which is prophesied to push out this word throughout the four corners of the earth. But there is going to be a time, which the time we are, you know, rapidly heading into where you won't be able to hear these words because Esau is worked. The government is working with these big time uh, social media companies, which they're all working for the elites any, any damn way to what to uh, uh, put a uh, blockage on this word from getting out. All right. And this is why the scripture talks about seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Okay? It says, They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. 
all right? They're not going to be able to find the words that are going to make them stable, the words that's going to give them, give them knowledge. Because the scripture tells you that the Most High is a God of knowledge. So if you're not hearing the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, how are you going to be stable in these times that we're coming into? How are you going to know what to do? How are you going to know, you know, uh, how are you not going to bug out? Okay? Because uh, everybody's going to seek answers in that day, but answers won't be had. All right? And the only ones that's going to have the answers is, are the who? The men of the Lord and the women, you know, of the Lord as well. They're the ones, you know, starting with the prophets, the ones that took heed unto the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he put into the prophet's mouth. All right, so uh, look, read and keep him going on here. Now, Biden insists this will not target speech, but how does that work when policing social media and labeling certain ideas as dangerous is already part of the plan? Extremely insulting to many groups of people in this country. Uh, and the timing is interesting because uh, they said uh, Biden's administration has said that white supremacy, whatever that is, is the greatest domestic terrorism threat in this country. We can only assume what they're talking about is Trump supporters. They're talking about working class people of all colors, by the way, and all sexualities and what have you, uh, who kind of look like the people we saw at the Capitol on January 6th. So the Biden administration, of course, doesn't have any interest in stopping political extremism. Uh, more because he would have mentioned Antifa and he would have mentioned the uh, more violent elements of Black Lives Matter. There might be some interesting legal issues that come up. Should big tech be reporting people that it thinks are white supremacists or white nationalists? Something tells me they probably already are. I mean, the, the big tech works so closely with the U.S. government and with the Democrat Party and any liberal institution. Who knows what information they're sharing and who knows what they're doing behind the scenes? One of those dangers, an, an innocent person being persecuted because they said some, you know, uh, unsavory things on the internet or drunk in a bar or something, right? Uh, and I think we will see a lot of those cases. Now, the original war on terror did not work out so well. Terrorist groups have gotten bigger and stronger since it began. Many are looking on and wondering exactly how successful we should expect these new operations launched within U.S. borders to be. Caleb Moppin, RT, New York. Okay, so, you know, you just had it where he said that, um, it's really, really going to, you know, uh, uh, take an effect on freedom of speech, which they're slowly but surely taking that so that so-called uh, freedom <laughs> away. All right, that's why everything that, especially when it comes to the prophets, you know, us you know, teaching this word, everything gets flagged. You know, uh, lessons, uh, videos get taken down, striked, whole channels get you no, know, um, you know, uh, 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 ex ex terminated. That's all matter of free speech because we're not out here advocating for anybody to do anything physically you know uh, and we're not telling anybody to get violent the scriptures actually speak completely opposite of that all right it speaks about what waiting ye upon the lord all right you know blessed are they that wait upon the lord so we only thing we're speaking about is what the lord said he is going to do you know at the appointed time all right and we're speaking about uh, uh revealing the wicked the evil according to what the words of the creator yahweh bashim yahweh shai has said is good and what it has said is evil all right but once again because we live in a world of lies we live in a, a evil world esau doesn't want the truth to to, to to go out but you know um as pertaining to this vid this article i got a uh I mean, that this video i got an article here which i just read the title so i'm gonna read you know try to read through this it says joe biden's administration has unveiled a plan to tackle domestic terrorism in the united states which this truth you know, according to Project Megiddo, uh, um, is already labeled, you know, even, uh, I believe it's that the Southern Poverty Center, a uh, law center, SPLC, um, they already label, you know, uh, this truth as, as uh, extremist, all right, or potentially terror, terroristic, right? So it says, but with no definition of what is considered extremis extremism, and a desire to get the public to snitch on neighbors, there's potential for chaos. Now, when you go into this word extremism, right? You look at this word because this word is used often, all the time, you know, when it comes to Esau and uh, him trying to label domestic, so called domestic terrorists. So it says deposition to go into extremes and doctrines and doctrine or, pra or practice. From extreme extremism, so this is the uh, edamon, right? Let's let's just type in extremism because I did this before. 
And I remember they uh, changed the whole definition from when I first seen it. But let's see. It says the holding of extreme political or religious views. All right. So the holding of, of extreme political or religious views. Now, what does that mean? OK, because we hold the view of the the, the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, very dear and, and near. All right. The scriptures actually tells us here in um, Revelation, the second chapter. Revelation chapter two, verse twenty five, it says, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. OK. And what do we have? We have our faith. We have this knowledge. We have this the, the, the doctrine, all right, the understanding of the scriptures. So it says hold fast, right, to take hold of, to take hold, to seize, to obtain, to be masters of, all right? We're supposed to be masters, you know, in this script, in, in, in these scriptures. You know, speaking of, you know, uh, starting with the prophets, it says to lay hands, all right, on, in order to give them power, to, to hold in the hand, to hold fast, not discard or let go, to keep carefully and faithfully, to continue to hold, to retain, <laughs> of death, continuing to hold one. So that's why the scripture says, be faithful until death and I shall give thee a crown of life. Right? Strive for the truth until death and the Lord shall fight for thee. So even death shouldn't separate you from holding on to this, to this knowledge, to this, you know, to this truth. All right. So, yeah, we have to be extreme when it comes to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and the faith of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because the Lord, it's like because Esau wants to take away our faith. He wants to let us, you know, let go uh, uh, of our faith, of our, you know, uh, of, of our belief in what the scripture says. So that right there labels us as a so-called extremist because we hold fast or we hold extremely on our belief in this truth, right? Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let's see what the word extreme. Existing in a very high degree, going to great or exaggerated lengths. Okay, and they have what? Radical. <laughs> so if you go to great and, ex and exaggerated lengths, where the scripture tells you that you can't even go far enough to serve the Lord. You see, but this is what Esau does, man. He throws these words out here, these buzzwords. And then because you out there and you are showing your faith, as James said, you know, faith without works is dead because you're showing your faith by your works, Esau. And it goes contrary to what, what is wicked or right, what this world promotes. Esau is going to label you as an extremist. So we're not, you know, uh, we're not going to marvel at that, at the fact that we're being labeled as that. But as the scripture says that we're not to suffer as evildoers. OK, so let's continue this. Um, it says most Americans despise terrorists, both foreign and domestic. And the U.S. has experience uh, has experience of both. So when Biden administration came forth with plans to combat domestic terrorism. Uh, domestic. Uh, it's like you. Domestic terrorism, one could reasonably have expected some rather standard practices and understanding of what they are looking for. And that's why they're they're so vague with what, you know, with with what uh, the terminologies that they're using so that they can just lump everybody all in together. And specifically, uh, this truth, that's who that's who their primary focus is. It says, but what has been revealed so far suggests uh, suggests America is being run by the party of the George uh, Orwell's 1984, if it were led by the three blind mice. The plan seemed to revolve around encouraging people to rat on one another based on suspicions of radicalization. And one of the goals is to draw up a list of prohibited extremist activities for the department, defense department, even though what is considered extremism hasn't been properly uh, defined yet. So they're going to list, they want to draw up a list of prohibited extremist activities, all right? You know, and I, I shared this in our group chat, and one of the brothers said, oh, now they're about to come with the Hebrew Israelite uh, guidelines one-on-one, all right, how to identify he, a Hebrew Israelite, right? And these are going to be the, you know, if they're out there wearing certain fr fringed garments, you know, if they're out there posted up uh, on, on highways, on corners, or, or in parks or whatever, you know, 
these are potential uh, extremism and, and radicals and you should snitch on them. If you have any family members that are a part of this group that go out there and teach, you know, if they believe on a name of what they call uh, Paleo-Hebrew, you know, they could potentially be extremists or radicals. You know, that's what Esau is going to do, man. But your scriptures, you know, this is not something that we, the Lord already said that these things are going to happen. All right. We're just seeing it actually play out in today. And we're able to link it up with what Yahweh Shai already warned us was going to happen. Okay. And this is what it says right here. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 35. For I am come to set a man variance against his father. And you go into that word variance is what a difference. All right. Of a man's and what, what makes people different mainly is their thoughts, their ideologies, what their morals, their standards. In this world, the masses of this world have a have this world's standards, have this world's moral or lack of morals, okay? But we are held at a higher standard. We're held at the, st the highest standard, okay, of what? Of, of the godly, all right? Of the pious, of the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shai. So we cannot be looked at. We, we are not going to have, you know, same views and ideas as the majority of our family members, all right, our so-called friends, you know, people of this world. And why? Because we put on the mind of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai, as he said, he is not of this world. So it says, For I am come to set a man variance against his father and a daughter against her mother. So if you got women that are in this truth and, and their parents, you know, believe in Jesus Christ or, you know, Jesus Christus, all right, Santa Maria or, or you know, voodoo or whatever, or, you know, uh, atheism or Satanism, whatever. You know, you have women and men that, that believe on Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai that their family members do not. It says, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be of his own household, right? And that's why he says right here, he that loveth his father or his mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth his son or, her, or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You know, and, and it's, it's spiritual because the Lord is making a full circle of this. Because when you first come to this truth, the first people that become your foes are... You know, your parents, you know, your, your your relatives, your brothers, your sisters, your girlfriend, so on and so forth. Right. That's the first people that become, you know, uh, comes at come at variance against you. But now it's coming full circle because, you know, as time goes on, you know, they just see some sometimes, you know, you, you end up just splitting apart and never, you know, having real conversations with those people again. Or, you know, they just get over it and you just, you know, walk in your, your, your truth lot. And they walk in, in there, whatever lot they're walking, and there's a way that you're still able to be cordial with one another. But now Esau, through his um, trying to combat what he says domestic terrorism, which really he's trying to stop this truth from you know continuing to spread, but it's already too late. Now he's um, going to entice people to so-called snitch or rat on anybody who they believe has suspicion of radicalization. All right, and you type into this word, let's go radical. Radicalism or radicalize. Let's see what this is, radical. So even with the word radical, right, it's not even a um, a word that, that has a defined standard definition. Uh, let me see. It says become radical, radical. Transis, transitive uh, to make radical to cause to conform to radical ideas. So you go into the adjective for radical. It doesn't even or oh, reformist of extreme. The meaning unconventional. All right, yeah, there we go. So one of the meanings unconventional. When you go to the noun, it says uh, where was it? Political sense of extremist person who holds radical principles. One who pursues a theory to its furthest limit. And the furthest way to pursue our faith is to do the works, is to believe and to, you know, do the works. That's it. To teach the word. So how can you equivalent somebody who believes on the words of Yahweh Shai as being a radical? Well, guess what? They did it to Yahweh Shai. They did it to the prophets. They did it to the disciples, which is why they all got persecuted, which is why they all got, um, you know, uh, uh, crucified or just are or beheaded or killed in whatever manner that they that they did because that wicked world back then seen the faith of Yahweh having faith in Yahweh Shai as being uh radical all right and here's proof of this 
So this is from, like I said, Nero persecutes the, the Christian church, 64 AD. This is a snippet. It says the beginnings of Christians' martyrdom. says the following accounts was written by the Roman historian Tacticus in his book Annals, published a few years after the event. So this is an actual Roman historian or a secular history. Tacticus was a young boy living in Rome during the time of the persecutions. All right, so just to lock it, bear with me one second. Just got to do something. Um, so it says, therefore, now this is a, a, uh, a excerpt where you see the quotations, which Tacticus, uh, Tacticus wrote. It says, therefore, to stop the rumor that he has set Rome on fire, speaking about Nero, a.k.a. a false flag, he, Emperor Nero, falsely charged with guilt and punished with the most fearful tortures the persons commonly called Christians. And the Christians were Jews. When you read in the book of Antioch, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, Salakia, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see, Let's Acts 20, 26. I try to find it. Ah, oh, so like you. Acts, Acts 11, verse 26. It says, And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And, came, and it came to pass that a whole year that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Okay. So the disciples, which were Israelites, okay, were called Christians first in Antioch. Antioch is a city, I believe, in Syria, if I'm not mistaken. So they, were, they wasn't even in, in Judea or the land of Israel, but by the other people that was in the land of Syria, whether they be, you know, non-believing Israelites or whether they be heathens of the other nations, they called the believers in Yahweh Shai, which were Israelites, aka the disciples, Christians first in Antioch. So when you go into the history of what a Christian is, it was an Israelite who believed in Yahweh Shai, in the teachings and the message of Yahweh Shai, which is really the message of Yahweh. All right. So it says the persons commonly called Christians who were generally hated for their, their enormities. Now going to this word enormities, it says that the Christians were generally hated for their enormities. All right. This word enormities it says transgressions, crime, irregularities. What we teach is irregular. All right. It's not common. It's not, you know, something that uh, uh, is easily understood. It's not something that everybody you know, uh, uh, finds normal uh, to contrary, you know, to con contrary, everybody finds it what irregular, abnormal, right? And Esau is trying to make this irregular thing in this world, which is truth. <laughs> truth is irregular here. Righteousness is irregular here. Uh, uh, morals is irregular here. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, living by laws, you know, righteous laws is irregular here. They're trying to make that what? Extreme. They're trying to make that hateful. They're trying to make that wicked. Going back to the scriptures, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So reading down here to the adjective, enormous, abnormal, meaning what? Not normal. See, in this world, the truth is considered abnormal, meaning in a bad sense, right? The truth is, is, is keep going, it says, from the Latin, enormous, out of rule. Out of what rule? The rule of Esau. The rule of do as thou wilt. The rule of, you know, uh, uh, be your own God. God is your belly. But this this truth, being a follower of Yahweh Shai, is out of that rule. Because it's in the rule of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. It says irregular. All right. Uh, from assimilated form of X, meaning out of, and norma, which you get the normous, meaning rule or norm. So the enormities is really out of the norm of the society that we're living in. And we know, as the scripture says, that this whole world lieth in wickedness. So if you're out of the norm, 
of the whole world, that means you're out of wickedness, which means you are in righteousness, which is why the scripture says you that, let's get that real quick, in the book of Romans 8 chapter, Romans 8 verse um, 7, it says, but the carnal mind is enmity against the most high, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can indeed be. All right, because this world promotes carnality, but we are out of that normal. We're not uh, <laughs> the new normal, which they're trying to pray, bring out is that digital normal, right? Digital slavery, but we are out of the norm of this society, which is why Yahweh Shai said, well, we are not of this world. Another scripture here, James 4 verse 4, ye adulteresses and, adul ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with the most high? Whosoever, therefore, is, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. Okay, you go into the word en enmity. It says, causing enmity, hostility, by reason, opposition, hatred. So our, and our uh, en enormities is out of the norm of this world because this world is wicked. This world is evil. This world is opposeth all things that is called the Most High. So going back here, was generally hated for their enormities. They're out of the norm, which we are also. Christus, which is speaking about Yahweh Shai, um, the founder of that name was put to death as a criminal by Pontius Pilate. Why was he put to death? Because they said what? He was an extremist. He was a radical. He had enormities that was not um, conducive or that was not in line with the Roman Empire at that time. Okay. That's why they said what? That he calls himself a king. And they said, we have no king but Caesar. Because back then, worshiping Caesar was like, you know, a, a religion. It was something that you, as a Roman, you were supposed to do. You were supposed to worship Caesar. Okay, it says, uh, pro, pro, uh, procurator of Judea in the reign of Tiberius, Tiberius Caesar. But the pernicious superstition, repressed for a time, broke out yet again, not only through Judea, where the mischief originated, you see, they call they call the truth, they call the, the gospel mischief, superstition, conspiracy theory. It's the same thing they're doing now. They're not calling that they're not calling Christianity that. That is the, the one of the most publicized, one of the most popular so-called beliefs <laughs> in the world. So they don't look at that as being mischief. They don't look at that as being, you know, superstition, right? And that's how you know that that's not the real, that's not the gospel of Yahweh Shai. That's that other Jesus <laughs> spoken about by Paul. It says, um, but through the city of Rome also, whither all things horrible and disgraceful flow from all quarters, as to a common receptacle, a receptacle, receptacle and where they are encouraged. Basically, you know, saying that everything that uh, anybody was into came to the city of Rome because Rome was like a metropolis and that's where Babylon the great is you know that's why the scripture talks about how this word you know uh, uh, was in the land of our captivity we're going to remember ourselves Babylon the great all right aka Rome which is that beast that had a wound but not uh, was wounded unto death but was healed it said according to the first who according accordingly first who were arrested were who confessed that they were Christians, meaning what? That they confessed, they uh, confessed the name of Yahweh Shai, their belief. All right, stood so stiffly for the name, which the scriptures also talks about that here. Matthew 5, verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. All right, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. So the same thing that happened then is happening, is uh, happening right now all over. All right, but we know that the Lord is going to set up that standard, you know, uh, at this time, man. Okay, the Lord is going to uh, uh, show His power in them that believe. Actually, there's a scripture that that uh, you know proves that. Wisdom of Solomon 12 verse 17: For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, and this is a time that people do not believe in God the most, man. All right. 
people don't they they you tell you that you believe in the heavenly father the higher the the the, the most high you believe in a higher power you're looked at as being uh, crazy they would they would think that you to be you know clinically insane all right when you speak about the chariots when you speak about spiritual power immortality us ruling dominance over the world intergalactic travel all right, our people in order, our women in order. <laughs> that in itself is just like, oh, you got to be insane. If you think a woman, the so-called black or Hispanic woman, is going to be quiet, is going to be humble, is going to, you know, be submissive, right? But that's going to show you the power of the Lord. So it says, when men would not believe that thou art of a full power, and this time right now is the most highest point in time where do men do not believe that the Heavenly Father exists, that the Heavenly Father uh, I will act to deal as in the kingdoms of men. It says what? Thou showest thy strength. And that's what the Most High is going to do. He's going to stamp his name on this earth by showing his power, showing his might, destroying Esau and his kingdom, delivering the elect, the lowly, the meek, the poor, the ones who, who have no help. All right. It says, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. And the Lord is going to show it, man. Because we already, we know it, so the Lord's going to show it. All right? We know it, and the Lord's going to show it. It says, um, who confessed that they were Christians. Next, on their information, so you have men that that are out there on the highways and byways, women out that, that, you know, uh, uh, claim to be in this truth, that are going to get pulled over, going to get stopped, they're going to get their houses raided, they're going to get... Uh, uh, you know, question brought in, you know, into the FBI, CIA, whatever, you know, the the the, the non um, agencies that are not even listed. All right. And they're they're going to be questioned, beaten, whatever. And some of them are going to fold. And that's why the scripture says here. Uh, Matthew 24, verse uh, nine, they shall deliver you up to, uh, to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you should be hated of all nations for my namesake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So you're going to have, you know, your family members are going to betray you. You're going to have even men that claim to be in this truth. Like, Lord willing, I'm not. And none of the men I know and anybody that's hearing this, we got to pray that we're <laughs> that, that we don't have that spirit in us. You know, we want to endure until the end, even if it's the end is death, man. Okay, but there are going to be people who are going to fold during that time, which is why the scripture says talks about um where is it at? Uh going jumping down right here, uh verse 13. But he that shall endure it unto the end, the same shall be saved. All right, the ones who are going to be able to endure all this persecution that Esau is clearly you know, mounting up are going to be the ones that's going to, uh, you know, be saved. It says next on their information, a vast multitude uh, were convicted, not so much on the charge of burning the city. So they were, they were tortured, tried, convicted, but not because they tortured the city, not uh, Salaki, not because they burned the city, not because they were what they were accused of doing the false flag, but rather what as of quote unquote, hating the human race. So this is what they got convicted for, hating the human race. This is what our forefathers and for and you know and the the people that were back then, the Israelites that believed on Yahweh back then, that were uh, martyred. They got killed for hating the human race, and if you you know were in the truth back in, I believe it was like what six seven years ago, maybe eight eight years ago. Um, they had that uh. That little uh, um, compilation on Wall Star, the America's most hateful group, and it was who the Israelites, you know. So they already have that 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 uh, that narrative out there, and now they're trying to get people to you know snitch on what they considered quote unquote extremists. It says the definition of extremism is is the best place to start because from a law enforcement perspective, there needs to be a clear legal framework of what exactly is going what exactly is going to be constituted is, is going to constitute extreme that's right because like i just read it's so vague so obscure it, it can lump in any and everything and that's why they did it that way purposely so that they can label us as extremists 
It says the culprits are individuals who target others because they believe that the white race is superior to anyone else. And that's speaking about white supremacists, right? But and see, even in this truth, we don't target anybody based off of their color, okay? Because the scripture tells you that Israel is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. You can have an Israelite looking like this man, you know? <laughs> this man, I'm not saying him himself, but you can have somebody that looks exactly like him and him being an Israelite. So it has nothing to do with your, your uh, actual complexion of your uh, skin, all right? As the scripture says that uh, um, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of the most high. Okay, it's a spiritual thing. All right, so, you know, that's basically it on on uh, that. Let me see if I read this last one. People who top the ideas now. So, yeah, I'll read this one. It says, what compounds this is the idea of opening up hotlines that encourages encourage people to snitch on their neighbors for this same unidentified extremism. And if the definition that is settled on as it on is as wide as the likes of the garrison apparently believes it is, this initiate starts initiative starts to make even less sense. So it's so wide, it's so vague that anybody that goes that that says I have an idea or speaks against the political acceptance of what is being put out by the Congress and the president and mainstream media will be considered extremists. Because once again, they want to have everybody without, to worship the beast. All right. They want everybody to worship the beast and, and receive his mark. And the number one, numero uno public uh, enemy is us, the Israelites, man. But that's why the Lord said he's going to set up that standard. So we know that we're going to get persecuted for this truth. And that's why the scriptures talks about not being suffering as a uh, uh, as an evildoer. First Peter chapter four, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busy busybody in other men's matter. That's right, because we're already going to suffer. So if we're going to suffer, it says, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, which we just read that the Christians, the followers of Yahweh Shai, the Israelites, they're going to also suffer. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the most high on his on this behalf. So that's why when you come into this truth, there is a stand, a code of conduct that you have to uh, uh, follow, all right, a way of living, a, a, a way of walking, walking in the spirit. You ain't supposed to be rowdy, out here drunk, being a thief, being a robber, being an arsonist, being a, a, a murderer, being a rapist, you know, being a domestic violence, uh, uh, um, you know, person, okay? None of these things, man. You're supposed to be, as the scripture says, let your light shine so that they will see you and give the most high, your father, which is in heaven, glory. And if you're going to suffer for that, if you're going to suffer for following Yahweh Shai Mashiach, then don't be ashamed in that. But be, but glorify in that. Because the spirit of the Most High resteth upon you. And know ultimately that the Lord is going to defend all those that are being persecuted for his namesake and his son's sake and the doctrine's sake. All right? This is 2 Edges chapter 7, chapter 16, verse 70. All right, so like here, let me just send this out real quick. Uh. <clears throat> All right, so reading on here, it says, it's um, so like here, verse 2nd uh, Edge 6. Second, uh, second chapter 16, verse 70 says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. All right, what is this word insurrection? Insur uh, insurrection, excuse me. An uprising against, civ against civil authority. All right, a rising up. Okay, so they're going to rise up against us. All right. But that's why the Lord said when when the enemy shall come in like a flood, all right, when a flood or, you know, a big wave come, what it rises up, then shall the spirit of the Lord set up a standard against him. So when they rise up, as it says right here, insurrection against all they, those that fear the Lord. Who are those that fear the Lord? The Israelites, they're so, these so-called Christians don't fear the Lord, man. OK, they're hypocrites. They're liars. They're actors. 
they draw they draw uh they draw near to him with his with with their mouth but their heart is their mind is far from him okay we're the ones the sincere men and women of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that believe in his truth are the ones that fear the Lord and that's who Esau is coming after it says for, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses then shall they be known who are my chosen. Why? Because that standard is going to be uplifted. See, Esau is going to bring the pressure, and the Most High is going is going to bring is going to bring the pressure. Okay, Esau, the Lord is going to cause Esau to move and go hard, so that the Lord can move and go hard on our behalf and the, the, on the chosen behalf, and that's how they're going to be known. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire, and this is a part of the trial. This is a part of it. Okay. Them coming at us, labeling us these things and, and having our family members and friends snitch on us, you know, having us being looked at as domestic terrorists or our jobs, you know, getting a tip, getting tipped that we are part of this so-called domestic terroristic group, blah, blah, blah. That's all the trying of our faith, man. All right. But just like the trial of our faith, the Lord is going to, you know, give us what is needed in order to come out of that temptation. It says, uh, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, beloved, the house of David, that would die. That's what David means. It says, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. What trouble? Jacob's trouble, right? Jeremiah 30, verse 7, At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And who is that he? Speaking about the elect, okay? The elect is going to be saved out of the trouble that is going to, uh, you know, uh, persecute them is going to pursue them it says behold the days of trouble are at hand but i will deliver you from the same be ye not afraid neither doubt for the most high is your guide all right and if the most high is guiding us who can be against us all right if the most high is guiding us we, we know that we're not going to be lost because he knows all and sees all all right and as the scripture says that that all things work toward the good of them that love the lord man so all this happening, even the persecution, the trying of our faith, us being locked up, uh, second, uh, Revelation 2 verse uh, 9, you know, us being thrown into prison and tried for 10 days, all that is working toward the good. And the ultimate good is what our salvation, the kingdom of heaven, righteousness, immortality, Yahweh Shai reigning with the house of David, wickedness, Esau, these other nations being put into captivity. All that is all this right here that you're seeing, even though we're warning of these times or these trying times that are happening, know that ultimately this is working toward the good. It's working toward the best thing that can ever, ever in existence that is going to happen to us, man. So we take this light affliction now for the, because for the eternal weight of glory, because this light affliction cannot be compared to what is going to happen, you know, as it was going to be given, the glory that's going to be revealed in us once Yahweh Shai returns, man. So, yeah, you know, this is all a part of it, all a part of the plan. You know, uh, we just got to continue just to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his work. And he's going to deliver us from these things, man. So, I end that there, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Till next time, Shalom.